Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a great day today. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today and we're going to look at is Bitcoin ready for 300 million new users. Yeah, I said that correctly. 300 million, most of which will be new users. In fact, today there's only about 30 million actual Bitcoin cryptocurrency addresses that are in use and that is a tenfold increase. That's 10 times the number of users. Wow, would that have a huge impact on the price and on the popularity and on all kinds of things. In fact, as that 300 million users get involved, they will be spreading the word and that will spread the word and that will spread the word and you know what? It'll have a cascading effect. Could that be the catalyst that takes Bitcoin from only a small percentage of the world using cryptocurrency to a large percentage of the world using cryptocurrency? Time will tell. So. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. That's what this channel is all about, is we're going to help you take profits and avoid losses with the information that we give you because our channel is focused on information that's going to help you out and make good decisions with cryptocurrency. So can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. Hey, it really helps us out. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Be sure to read the rest of this disclaimer because it really can help you out in terms of making good decisions and taking profits and avoiding losses. So PayPal has confirmed development of crypto capabilities. Now think about that for a second because PayPal has over 300 million users. And with PayPal introducing cryptocurrency into the PayPal platform, all of a sudden you've introduced 300 million people and given them easy access to cryptocurrency. And that's really a big key to mass adoption. The easier it is for them to get involved, the more people get involved. You know, when you, when you look at the, um, the Apple iPod and the way it gave music to people on a very small device and you could record thousands of songs on a single device. When it first came out, the only people that could use it were people that owned Apple computers. And then it expanded to where uh, people who had Windows or Apple computers could use it. And then it expanded again so that all you needed was access to the internet and uh, you know, possibly through a cell phone or a smartphone or some other device, and you would be able to download and listen to music. And so as that ecosystem grew, Apple made huge amounts of money, and you saw that their adoption went from just a small group of people, because when it was only available to people who had an Apple computer, um, Apple computers have less than 10% of the total uh, computing market and so only a small group of people had access to it but as they got access to a hundred percent of the computer market and then as smartphones evolved and developed more and more people had gotten involved and so that caused Apple to grow huge because of the number of users that could access the Apple platform and as a result it pushed them into being a, a, a huge world dominant corporation. Very, very big. Well, the same thing is on the verge of happening with cryptocurrency because with PayPal exposing 300 million people to cryptocurrency, all that's gonna do is increase the adoption of cryptocurrency. In fact, this was really big news because it was all over the place. Not only was it in finance magnets, but it was on uh, Cointelegraph where they put out a, a article about PayPal letter seems to confirm crypto capability rumors because a couple of weeks ago there were articles about this, but it was only a rumor at the time. Uh, Satoshi Nakaboto came out with an article, PayPal letter confirms it's working on crypto capabilities. 
We saw it on blockchain news. PayPal confirms its plans to develop cryptocurrency capabilities in its letter to the European Commission. And that's really where this letter came from was it was a letter to the European Commission about PayPal's interest in seeing greater cryptocurrency regulations as well as PayPal uh, kind of telling them how they're developing their own cryptocurrency capabilities. And so it's this letter that's confirming this information. And so while it is big news, I haven't seen too many people talking about, well, why is this news important? Well, the first area is it gives exposure to millions of new Bitcoin and crypto users because millions, there's over 300 million users that use Bit, uh, I'm sorry, use PayPal today. And with those 300 million people having easy access to cryptocurrency, I mean, uh, today, if you want to manage cryptocurrency, it's more difficult because you got to download a software wallet, you got to sign up with an exchange, you've got to transfer money over, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, since I've been involved with cryptocurrency over the last two years, it's been getting easier and easier. There's more places where you can just take a credit card and buy Bitcoin or buy other cryptocurrencies. Um, it's been easier to, to get just a simple software wallet. And as always, if you like, you can't always keep your cryptocurrency on an exchange. Some exchanges have become easier to uh, onboard. Other exchanges have, have increased the amount of uh, know your customer uh, type qualifications. And so every, every place is doing a little bit different in that regard. But there are some places still where if you've got a credit card, uh, that's all you need in order to buy Bitcoin and put it into a software wallet. And so PayPal will make this dramatically easier as it ex gives uh, cryptocurrency exposure to 300 million existing users. Now, with that happening, that puts buying pressure that'll cause a bull market with that influx of new users suddenly having access to cryptocurrency. Many of those people will want to purchase some of it and that causes buying pressure and as more and more users are wanting to purchase it it'll cause the price to go up and as the price goes up then more users will see the prices going up and say hey i want to get in on this thing i don't want to miss out and so it really is a cascading effect not only that but that's also going to put pressure on other companies to release their crypto access so there's lots of companies out there that have plans in the works to release access to cryptocurrency to their customers. You know, one of those examples is TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade has been telling their customers that they're going to make available cryptocurrency trading. Now, TD Ameritrade is a part of the stock market and there's, you know, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, uh, trade station there's a whole bunch of different companies out there that give people access to the stock market via their accounts online well that gives you another 500 million customers in other words we could go from seeing a market of 300 million new customers to 800 million new customers now i know there's going to be a certain amount of ab overlap i know that some people who have a, an account on a stock exchange also have a PayPal account um, but the people who are on the stock exchange oftentimes are, are investing more money than PayPal users and so while the clientele while there will be some overlap that, that people that have both there's also a large number of people that only have one or the other they only have a PayPal account but they don't have a stock market account or they have a stock market account and they don't have a PayPal account. And so with the exposure to 500 million people through stock market companies like TD Ameritrade, you're gonna see another huge influx. And so PayPal is just gonna put pressure on these companies to speed up their access to cryptocurrency trading. Um, and that'll give exposure to 500 million additional users. And that's huge because these people, you know, some of them are institutions. And so institutions are investing billions of dollars into different assets, different stocks, 
you know, the, the, the majority of the money that goes into the stock market isn't from retail investors. The majority of that money is coming from institutions. And with institutions being that already have a TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab or one of the other accounts on the, on the different uh, you know, exchanges, different stock market companies, uh, that's going to give them easy access to purchasing and investing in cryptocurrency. Another area is backed. Now, if you're familiar with what's been happening in the cryptocurrency market over the last year or so, you'll probably be familiar with BACT, B-A-K-K-T. BACT is a joint venture between the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange, Microsoft, and Starbucks. And the three of those companies came together and created a cryptocurrency exchange that trades futures uh, futures contracts of cryptocurrency. Well, that went live in, uh, I think it was September of 2019. And so it's coming up on its one year anniversary in a few months. But one of the products that BACT has announced that they're introducing is the BACT app. And the BACT app allows you to create a portfolio that contains digital assets. So those digital assets could come from your favorite game your digital assets could come from different forms of rewards such as airline miles or uh, Starbucks rewards or rewards from all kinds of different places. The app will also be able to handle cash for you so you could actually literally store cash on the app and the app will allow you to store cryptocurrency and you'll be able to trade cryptocurrency. You'll be able to be able to trade any of these different digital assets back and forth. And so they're digitizing cash, they're digitizing rewards points such as American Airlines or many, many other different rewards. A lot of people work at companies and the companies will give different kind of reward points to their employees when they do a good job. And some of those those corporate reward points will be available to store on this app. And then once you have it stored on this app, you'll be able to take this app to a Starbucks or to any kind of Microsoft uh, store. And, and you may or may not know this, but Microsoft is the company that hosts millions of websites online. And so when you go to you know, your favorite XYZ website and buy something from them, uh, today that website may be a Microsoft website. And if so, then in the near future, you're gonna be able to use this app to pay for pay for services from that website goods and services off of that website because Microsoft is building the infrastructure to make this app available on all of these different websites that use Microsoft services um, as a payment platform as well as a website platform plus the backed exchange is also setting up other institutions other businesses other entities where you'll be able to use any one of these digital assets to buy goods and services from other types of companies. And so while this is in its infancy, in fact, it's, it's literally, uh, it, it literally has not yet been born because this is not available today, but BACT has made, I, I've started seeing advertisements in a number of different places where BACT was advertising this app and, um, BACT has, has said that they will be releasing this application sometime this summer. So we need to be watching out for that because this is another area that could have a similar impact as TD Ameritrade or even as PayPal will have on the cryptocurrency market. So all of it is quite interesting news. All of it has dramatic potential in the cryptocurrency market. And then the final thing that I wanted to talk about is Grayscale put out their quarterly report. So as you may or may not know, Grayscale is a stock. They have a, a ticker, a fund, and that fund has a ticker symbol called GBTC. So if you go to your TD Ameritrade or your TradeStation account, you can buy the GBTC stock, uh, the GBTC fund. It's actually a fund and not a stock. Anyway, that gives you exposure to, to Bitcoin or to one of the other cryptocurrencies. And they just came out with their quarterly report that they have to file with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And in that quarterly report, they showed 
that they had bought $905 million in quarter two of 2020, $905 million of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Now, over 70% of that was in Bitcoin and the other 30% went into Ethereum and a handful of other cryptos. Um, but it's quite interesting that Grayscale is growing. And here's the reason why it's interesting. It gives us an, a, an idea of what... And when I say growing, this $905 million is a record for them. The previous... It almost doubles most of the previous quarters in terms of the amount of money that was being invested into the Grayscale funds. And when you see something like that double in a quarter, not just a year, but in three months, it doubled the amount of customers. Double, you know, think, of, think of a business. If your business doubled its sales in a three-month period, that's huge. And so they're seeing huge, huge growth and 84% of that growth is coming from institutions. It's coming from hedge funds and family offices and, and, and other large institutions that are used to spending, well, they, they manage billions and trillions of dollars under uh, management, under, the, under those different hedge funds and organizations. And so this is huge news when it comes to cryptocurrency because this is proof that institutions are continuing to get into Bitcoin and into cryptocurrency. So that's my news for you today. Any of the articles that I showed you, I'm going to have links to in the description below in the YouTube channel. So feel free to drill into the YouTube channel uh, where this, this video is located. And you'll find all of the links to the articles that I showed you throughout the video. Uh, in the meantime, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts, comments? Do you disagree with something I said? Look, you know things I don't know. I know things that you don't know. And when we share what we know together, we're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. So please feel free to share your, your comments and thoughts in the comment section below. And in the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.